Hi guys, Vipin here again, here to present to you about public finance. Now this video has been made not from the commerce point of view, but generally you're supposed to know what public finance is. Okay, so let's get started and let's look at what is public finance. Okay, now public finance refers to the study of the financial operations of the government. Now what does that mean? It In short, it refers to how does the government go about receiving money and how do they go about utilizing this money? Okay, in order to go about utilizing money, you need to prepare something which is referred to as a budget. Okay, a budget is an estimate of your expenses which would occur in the future. Now, how do you know how much expenses you're going to have? By looking at how much of revenue you're going to receive you go about allotting that revenue to the various requirements that would incur in the future. Now, when the 2014 budget is going to be presented, uh, Chidambaram would have considered the revenue received in 2013 for allotting it for the expenses in 2014. Okay. Now, there are three types of budgets that you would come across. A balance budget, a surplus budget and a deficit budget. A balanced budget is a type of budget wherein our revenue meets our expenses. Okay. In case of a surplus budget, our revenue exceeds our expenses. However, in the third case, which is a deficit budget and something which is in which India is quite used to, our expenses significantly exceed our revenue. Okay. Now, apart from this, you have budgets in India which are classified into fiscal budgets and in fact a railway budget. The fiscal budget is what the country looks forward to the most. Okay, And usually in the fiscal budget, it tends to be a deficit budget in the case. Okay, The railway budget, we have a separate budget in fact for the railways. Now why is that you might ask? Uh, it's because when the railways were introduced by the British in this country, the railways as an institution were so vast, not only then, they continue to be so vast even today, you need to have a separate budget just because of the vastness of that institution. Okay, now, this is something which I found a little interesting because I'm very curious and very uh, anxious to see how Chidambaram is going to present the budget in 2014. Okay, the reason being 2013 was a pretty bad year for India. Uh, one big reason for that would be the dollar and rupee fluctuations. In fact, the highest the dollar versus rupee was one dollar was equal to rupee 68.69. So in other words, the uh, situation was quite bad in India. Now don't giggle just because I said 69. Okay. Uh, let's look forward to the 2014 budget by Chidambaram. Now, where does the government actually go about receiving revenue? Okay, one major source of revenue for the government are taxes. Let's look at direct taxes now. A direct taxes, the first category you have there is income tax. Now, income tax is a tax that is levied on the salary of an individual. Okay, I'll focus just on the salary of an individual because it makes it easy. Now, if I were to earn a salary of 2 lakh rupees per annum, I would not be charged any income tax at all. The reason being 2 lakh rupees is the minimum exam is the exemption limit for income tax. If I were to be earning say 2 lakh 50,000, I would have to pay a balance of 50,000 rupees, 10% of 50,000 rupees as my income tax value okay now the maximum that you can pay in income tax is about 30 percent however there is a proposal by the government for high salaried individuals people who are earning more than rupees one crore okay they could go about in fact being taxed at 35 percent on their income so cricketers and actors beware you could in fact be paying a lot more taxes than what you are right now. Okay, the 30% slab could in fact go up to 35% is what they're proposing. Okay, the other one that you have is corporate tax. 
like the name says corporate tax is what companies go about paying and corporate tax stands at 30% flat for indian companies it's 30% however for foreign companies it's about 40% okay wealth tax is the tax that is levied upon the net worth of an individual how do you go about calculating the net worth of an individual you consider the value of the assets minus the liabilities that the person has liabilities as in the debts that the person has okay upon that you'll be able to know the net wealth of an individual moving on to gift tax let's say your father decided to sell some ancestral property and for the sale of that ancestral property a large amount of money he was he received a part of that money he decided to give it to you as a share now for that you could be taxed gift tax now thankfully that doesn't happen because gift tax was, was abolished in 1998 so no need to worry about that now interest tax interest tax is the tax that is levied on the interest that you, the interest income that you would earn on your deposits in commercial banks okay now what is the limit of income tax uh, what is the limit of interest tax you might ask if your interest income exceeds rupees 10000 in a year okay if your interest income exceeds rupees 10000 in a year then you could be taxed interest tax okay what about indirect taxes now let me first tell you what indirect taxes are okay now indirect taxes are a type of tax wherein you are paying it indirectly i know that sounds very vague but let me try to make this clear okay one commodity which we all paid indirect tax for is petrol petrol has a very very high rate of sales tax which is levied upon okay this is one of the reasons why the sales tax the petrol prices in different states are having a huge difference karnataka is one of those places where the taxes on fuel is extremely high now the oil companies or here in this case the dealers are supposed to be pay paying the sales tax but rather than you paying the rather than them paying sorry the sales tax they go about receiving that money from you and they eventually use that money and pay to the uh, pay to the state government in this case okay now that's what you would refer to as sales tax sales tax is also one of the reasons why even automobile prices are different in different states if you've gone through overdrive magazine or autocar you would have noticed that they would have mentioned x showroom it's say 5 lakh rupees however x chennai showroom is around say 5 lakh 20000 rupees you would find a mild difference in prices and the reason is for that is because of the local taxes here in this case it would be the sales tax then you have service taxes service taxes are uniform for the entire country it stands at 12.36% okay uh service taxes were not present for certain services like for example if you're running a salon uh, you need not charge your customer service tax but thanks to the recent amendments even salon services have been categorized for as a service for which you need to go about paying service tax or even fashion designers in fact the services they rendered also they need to go about paying service tax for this okay then you have excise excise is a tax that is levied on manufacturing products now what products here everything even if you have bought a 5 rupees ball point pen within that 5 rupees amount that you have paid you have in fact contributed to the excise revenue of the karnataka government okay excise depends on every state a good example here to tell you what excise is and how mcdonald's was cleverly avoiding this was when mcdonald's argued uh, when they had a case from the excise department of maharashtra saying that soft serve is not ice cream so we will not pay the taxes of 16% on the product value however the excise department took the case to the supreme court and supreme court squashed the argument of mcdonald's the supreme court said soft serve and ice cream are not independent products they are in fact the same mcdonald's however argued saying 
Ice cream contains 10% milk fat. However, our product in fact contains just 5% milk fat. It's a little ironic when you hear McDonald's serve something which is in fact low on fat. Not often do you come across something like that. Okay. The Supreme Court, however, said we can't really consider the argument of McDonald's because it's a little too vague. According to the Supreme Court and in fact a rational and a sane person like me, calling ice cream as a as soft serve doesn't magically change the product to something different. Now McDonald's needs to pay that 16% uh, 16 excise duty on every soft serve that is sold. So yes, even ice cream has got excise duty levied on it. Okay. Customs duties. Uh, customs duties are present are for both exporting of goods and in fact importing of goods. For exports there is export duty, for imports there is import duty. Import duties are extremely high. They range anywhere between 15%, 15% to upwards of 100%. In case you are importing luxury automobiles, the import duties on that exceeds more than 100% on the product. Okay. Now these are in fact the different sources of indirect tax. The other sources of revenue for the government a good example for this would be the sale of spectrum, 2G, 3G and 4G spectrum. Now I'll do a different video, a detailed video on what exactly spectrum is. That's a very, very interesting concept. In fact, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India has earned thousands of crores by the sale of this spectrum. The other sources of revenue, uh, there was even a recent scam on this, the Colgate scam as they call it, nothing to do with the toothpaste. Uh, it's merely the allocation of coal mines, coal blocks as they call it. That also is a very, very vital source of revenue for the government. The railway services, the post office services, all that as well adds to the, adds to the revenue of the government. Okay, moving on. So. VAT. What is VAT? Value added tax. Value added tax is going to change in the upcoming days to goods and services tax. But before that happens, let me try and tell you what is the meaning of value added in the first place. Okay. So what does it mean when you say value added or just adding value to a product? Now some products cannot be used in its raw form. They need to be altered through a manufacturing process and then you could go about using the product. Consider for example textiles, cotton textiles. Cotton in its raw form cannot be used as clothing. You need to clean the fabric, you need to clean cotton, you need to bleach it, you need to go about coloring it, you need to go about weaving it, you need to add patterns if you require. And then finally, you can actually go about considering it as a t-shirt or as a pair of denim uh, or as a pair of denim. Until you do that, it's nothing but just raw cotton. Now, through a manufacturing process, they are adding value to cotton. And that's what you refer to as value added. And that's where you go about adding the tax point of view for this particular concept. Okay. Cotton, remember, raw form you cannot use, you manufacture it, you go through the different process, you give it shape, you give it color, you give it some aesthetics, and then finally the product can be used. And that's where you go about charging VAT on this. VAT, just like uh, excise and sales tax, it differs in different states. Uh, in recent days, uh, our former Chief Minister Jaddi Shetar has increased the VAT from by 0.5%. So some products you go about paying 5.5% while other products you go about paying 14.5% as the value added tax on this. Okay. Now there are some more topics on this public expenditure and public debt. I will do this in another video. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. I hope this video was helpful.